The dichotomy paradox from the ancient Greek philosopher Zeno of Elea. Now Zeno was firmly in the questionable life choices camp when he decided to waste his big brain devising a whole collection of supremely confounding paradoxes designed to do nothing except shatter your common sense perceptions of reality itself. Total chaos agent. That guy. And with the dichotomy, he may have crafted his most deviously simple yet profound paradox ever. The premise is almost laughably straightforward. To get from point A to point B, you must first travel half the distance towards B. Then you must travel half of the remaining distance after that. Then half of what's left, and so on, into an infinite regression of endless halvings of the distance between the two points. Since any finite distance can be divided in half an infinite number of times, Zeno concluded that it's utterly impossible to ever complete an infinite number of steps and reach the destination. Let's make this more concrete with an example straight out of your everyday life. Suppose you want to simply walk across your bedroom, a distance of 10 feet. Using Zeno's logic, first you'd go 5 feet towards your goal, then 2.5 more feet, then 1.25 feet, 0.625 feet, 0.3125 feet, and so on forever. Each new step covering half the remaining distance to your destination. According to Zeno's paradoxical reasoning, no matter how many of those endless half steps you complete towards crossing the room, you would never be able to reach the opposite side because there would always be a next infinitesimal half distance yet to be covered. The sequence of halvings required to cross the room never terminates, leaving you frozen forever halfway there, and halfway there again, and halfway there ad infinitum. It's maddeningly simple logic that somehow concludes that clearly possible is utterly impossible. If taken at face value, the dichotomy paradox argues that not just walking across a room, but all motion everywhere is a logical impasse. A true paradox defying your everyday empirical reality. Thanks a lot, Zeno. You can almost picture the ancient Greek philosopher cackling to himself as the greatest minds of his era tore their hair out over his deceivingly straightforward yet paradigm-shattering logic puzzle about the apparent absurdity of all motion. For over two millennia, the dichotomy was a big sinister joke that made even renowned geniuses question their sanity and ability to reason. It wasn't until the development of advanced infinite series mathematics and concepts from calculus that the paradox was finally resolved in a way that avoids its absurd conclusion while still respecting Zeno's logic. You see, while continually halving distances does produce an infinite sequence of steps, those diminishing distances can be summed into a convergent infinite series that quantifies to a very finite, reachable total. Using our 10-foot example, that infinite sequence of halvings is 5 plus 2.5 plus 1.25 plus 0.625 and so on which converges on and sums to exactly 10 feet. So while there are indeed endlessly many steps involved, their combined quantifiable distances successfully complete the finite journey across the room after all. It's an elegant resolution that divorces the intuitive notion of steps from the rigid quantitative reality of finite distances. Zeno's wording leads you to envision an impossible, endless process. But mathematical analysis shows those infinitely many steps can still sum to something terminable. Or to put it simply, yes, you can cross the room and traverse distances without being frozen halfway there for eternity. The universe isn't rigged to entrap us in an endless paradoxical regression of immobility. Zeno's brilliantly deceptive logic punches way above its weight class in promoting that conclusion. So the next time you stroll across your living room or watch an object glide smoothly across a distance, you can appreciate that your empirical experience isn't betraying some deeper underlying logical absurdity preventing that motion. Thanks to over two millennia of mathematical analysis, we can finally put this ancient paradox to rest and respect the coherent possibility of motion after all.
Unless Zeno's twisted paradoxical genius has us all trapped in some even deeper level of delusion we're still failing to grasp. Nah, probably not. But it's fun to ponder the paradoxical mind pretzels, isn't it? Let me know if you've got any other notoriously confounding logic puzzles you'd like me to untangle or reinforce your existential dread over in a future video.